Hello and welcome to my Rust starter base guide. Uh, first off is location is important. You've got a few considerations. You want to be close enough to the monuments that you can go and do those without getting it. You don't want to be too prominent because obviously you'll get you'll make yourself a target if you're a small base because you're easy to raid. And um, also if you're really new to the server then you want to be relatively close to the safe zone so you can use their facilities. Here I'm building pretty much in the middle of nowhere because of I'm on a uh, test branch which means that everyone on here is spawning with lots of stuff to build with and it's easy to get going. So for this base you want to check that you can get the lower height as well as the higher height where you are. Um, and then it's just a four squares and a triangle base to get you started. What I'm also going to do here is check that I can put round later on. I'll be putting on um, honeycomb, so I'm checking I can get that round, and I've got plenty of room in front of my base to put the entrance that I want to do. But I'll let this play through. Um, you've got to get your TC made ready to place down as soon as you can. Make yourself relatively safe and do that. But also, you want to make the doors for your airlock, which you're going to want locks for obviously uh, if you're on your own you can use the wooden ones if not then it's best to use the code as soon as you can but obviously if you're stuck you can just make a wooden one for now and it'll just mean you've got to sort of stay in the base and keep letting whoever's with you in and out so you've got the four square bases and your um, triangular one for the air lockdown I'm making the doors whilst I'm upgrading these if you notice I'm going straight to stone to skip a bit of the wood so as soon as you can you get the doors down and just keep upgrading whilst you can um like i say skip the wooden section if you can if not don't be afraid to go to wood at least gives you more protection than twig um but yeah you if someone has to come through the, the twig wall you're going to know they're coming so you want to get this door on and get it locked as soon as you can and then it's just a matter of upgrading everything to stone at this stage Once you've got your foundation walls and ceiling stroke floors um, upgraded, you can then decide how you want to have this laid out. I've put a wall there, so it means that people have to, well, they can either blast through that wall or they've got to come round in like a U shape, um, horseshoe, whatever you want to call it, to get round to where I'm going to put the TC. And then once you've got a TC down, you've got 24 hours before everything rots away, but obviously it starts weakening straight away so you want to put some uh, supplies in there to keep everything maintained and then it's going on to the next stage of the build So I've been out, got more resources, got a few deployables to put in the base that I've either made or bought, whichever one you want to do. Um, if you can make them, it's easier. And then it's just a matter of dropping off what you don't want to be having, like taking off you as you're out building, because obviously you're making a lot of noise um, whenever you build something or upgrade, so you make yourself a target while you're doing it. So once you're authorised on the TC, and it, which automatically happens as soon as you put it down you can use the hammer option instead of for the upgrade the same way as that uh, you can there's a wrecking ball option and you can destroy anything you've built in the last 10 minutes but anyway for now i'm just going to go around put three triangle floors down and some walls to go with it and ceilings obviously um to make honeycomb so that someone's got to get through at least two walls to get into my base if they want to come from the side as you're doing this, you'll see there's like a, an X in the middle of the, of the twig wall where you place it. That's the weak side of the wall, um, which I'll show you in a moment, the two sides. But you get one side is a lot harder to come through than the other, so you've got that side there which looks rough. That's the stronger side than this smooth side that you've got there on the, outs on the outside walls. And so you, when you put them down, you want to make sure that that wall is facing the way you want it to actually go. So, just got to think about how you want it. 
by being inside the honeycomb as I build it, I, I afford myself a little bit of protection from other players running past. They won't necessarily see you, but obviously if they come from at least one angle, they're going to know where you are. If they hear you, they might just decide to come and get you anyway. Because you've got, I don't know, you've got building materials on you, and at these early stages, those are important. Anyway, if you do that on three walls, I'll show you how it looks from above in a moment. And um, that's your next stage, until it's time to go off and get more uh, resources to build the the next stage of it, which is to build the entrance to it. So there you are, you've got the four squares, you can see the, and three triangles around each wall and your airlock. Once you've got your um, resources, you want to make enough uh, a tier one or go to a safe zone and use tier one to make a, a two shot windows or shop fronts, I think they're called. So at that early stage, you can use a campfire near the front door to work out if anyone's trying to door camp you and then you're using the shop fronts to so you can just physically look out there but anyway if you light the fire it will give you a 50 percent comfort and if it goes higher than that then you know someone's out there i had that low jump up that i was using to get through that door because i've got the higher ones um you keep that because that's going to become your furnace pit and then you just build these uh, triangles around it as you should be able to see from the video how to lay them out but it's it's like the same as the honeycomb with a free going the opposite way to make it like an hourglass shape in front of it once you've got that down you want to upgrade it all and then get the doors and the windows onto it as fast as you can because as you can hear i've got someone with a nail gun nearby he's i think he's just going for leather but he could realize what i'm doing and decide to take all the materials off me if this was a normal server it's not worth it on a build server because you'll come in with like five thousand of each type anyway so when I put the shop fronts in, I put them with the uh, shelves and the, um, I don't know what you call it, a bit of pass-through on the inside, as you can see here. And then that way, if I need to, I can jump on top of those and look down, almost straight down, to see whether someone's crouching underneath the window, hoping that they're going to get me as I come out. With this design, you are still vulnerable to um, someone on your roof, but hopefully you'll know that they're up there because you've heard them put ladders on it and, and get up there because of you've already got a raised base anyway anyway so once you've got that on get your locks on and again you're relatively safe in here so now's the time to get your deployables for this say so that and then i realize i haven't actually put a roof on it yet um but yes yeah, so obviously put a roof down and get it up to stone as fast as you can It went dark, so I waited until morning to put down my furnaces because of there's not a lot of space. There's deliberately not a lot of space for them, so you've got to get in there and be very precise with it. Because um, they're now your new floor. You're fine to walk on these when they're on. They won't hurt you or anything. Um, yeah, I'll put a double door on to make it at least hide the fact I've got my vending machine storage here. When you put your vending machine down, you want to make sure that the vent at the back is facing towards you it's quite hard to see when you're up close to it um so i'll just open these doors up yeah so once it's down also you want to turn off the um thing straight away because otherwise it's it broadcasts where it is obviously that tells most people what you're doing but you get on there once you've gone into admin just press square a uh, triangle rather and it turns it off and then you've got quite a bit of storage at the front there so you can have all your sulfur and everything out there that you're doing in your bits ready to go quickly remember to upgrade the stairs to get me that get me in and they put everything that left in those as wood otherwise you, if you can get your materials all the same or just two types of materials obviously that makes it a lot easier so since we've got metal doors you're definitely going to need metal frags and 
if you made the whole base look like stone, then it it's much li less likely to be enticing to someone who thinks, you know, because obviously it's going to cost them to get in. And if they think you've got enough metal, especially early on, to entirely turn the thing into metal, then it's going to be where well, you're a target now because of you must have at least enough metal to um, or metal frags to um, keep the upkeep for like 24 hours. I don't think anyone normally leaves less than 24 hours in it anyway so this is the base from above as you can sort of see you've got the sides all honeycombed in and that but if you're happy with this is going to be all you want now you can do roof honeycomb it's only worth doing the honeycomb on the actual roof that, into your base one because of if they come through the other ceilings they have not got access to your base and if they if you honeycomb the whole thing in it looks like you might be using usable uh, honeycomb which is what they're called at where i've put the vending machine for storage they people class that as usable honeycomb or um sometimes people leave a window and then put all their furnaces in their honeycomb which again means that someone just blows through one wall and they've got at least some of your stuff and you don't want to make it look like you've done that because then you become a target so i'll just upgrade all this to stone and then put a floor on top of it or a ceiling depending on how you look at it and um, upgrade that to stone So, now I'll just show you that destroying thing where you go to the wrecking ball and it destroys it. If you've got the metal frags, or once you've got them, uh, upgrade your internal walls to metal, and then that way they've got to get through one stone, one metal, to make it a lot more expensive for them to raid you. And therefore, hopefully, they won't actually get in if they don't bring enough stuff. Hopefully this was useful to, for you or interesting. If you did, please leave a like, a comment, to let me know how I'm doing, and subscribe really helps the channel. I don't upload very often, but if I have something I think is going to be useful to people, I do. Thanks for watching.